So this was requested by Underground. One of the strangest cases I've ever seen. This is by the channel Disturbin. So make sure and go check out their channel, guys. Disturbin. Um, recently, Underground's been requesting some videos from this channel. And I've really been enjoying the, the videos. So one of the strangest cases I've ever seen. Let's go ahead and check this out, guys, by the channel Disturbin. Wheeled inside, screw we watched as Damon Kemp was wheeled inside, screaming and calling on a higher power. God! God! What the God! hell? This case takes place in the United States of America on the 7th of December, 2018. Trey Ingram was a former Bethune Cookman University student who was working on going back to school. With a remarkable academic track record and natural athletic abilities, Trey stood out among his peers. At a mere 19 years old, he had already established himself as a star football player during his high school years, and after graduating, honed his skills as a boxer at a local boxing club in Daytona Beach. It was within this boxing club that Trey often shared his time working out with a close friend, Damon Kemp. The trainer would later attest to their friendship. Is this guy crazy or something? They never witnessed any conflicts or animosity between the two friends. Trey and Damon had formed a bond during their Thanks, high school Vincent. days. Together, they would hang out and frequent parties. Eventually, they became roommates and lived at the Jade Park apartment homes. But I don't think that's what was happening to him, zombie, but you never know. <laughs> their harmonious living arrangement took an unexpected turn when Trey made the difficult decision to ask Damon to move out. The oh. reason behind this sudden change remains undisclosed. In October of 2018, Maybe Damon was relocated crazy. to residence on South Beach Street, accompanied by another friend named Quincy Smith whom he had met whilst attending Beth and Cookman University the previous year. However, Quincy quickly noted a startling transformation in Damon's behavior. Damon's once steady demeanor gave way to about- I think Damon has some mental issues is what I'm guessing. ...of paranoia, convinced yep. paranoia. that there were people after him. His unsettling oh, behavior God. culminated in a moment of distress when Damon, fearful and seeking refuge, tried to call into Quincy's bed. Quincy kicked him out of his what? room, and at around 7.15pm on the 6th of December, Quincy dropped Damon off at Trey's home at the Jade Park's apartments, unaware of the chaos that would soon unfold. In the early hours of the 7th of oh, December no. 2018, a chilling sequence of events unfolded at the apartment complex. Lodoris Giles, the sister of Trey Ingram, was engrossed in an online video game session with her brother when she suddenly heard the entrance of an unfamiliar man into Trey's apartment. She oh no, did... Okay, so let me get this... Let me get this straight. This here is Trey. Damon lived with Trey at one point. Trey kicked Damon out of his apartment or house. Damon's coming back to Trey's apartment and Trey's sister is there playing a video game and Damon just came back into the house. I think Damon's crazy. Could hear the sound of Trey's pit bull barking in the background. Trey, however, tried to calm the dog down, referring to the man as Mighty Daddy, Flute, what's up? Which is Damon's nickname. Lodoris could hear her brother talking to Damon but the exact nature of their interaction remains unclear. She overheard the conversation, and whatever she heard prompted her to drive to Florida in the dead of night, which was a 160-mile journey. She was deeply concerned for her brother's well-being. Meanwhile, within the apartment complex itself, chaos erupted. Oh no! Oh, no, I'm sorry. Trey was playing a video game with his sister. So she would, okay, she heard what was going on through her brother Trey's uh, microphone through the game or whatever. I'm sorry. That's what's going on. The apartment block was abruptly awakened by a knock at his front door. This resident opened the door, only to find himself staring down the barrel of a gun. The wielder of what? this weapon was Damon Kemp, 
In a rather threatening tone, Damon uttered the words, I will shoot you. In order to protect himself, the resident swiftly deflected the gun and forcibly pushed Damon out of the apartment before hastily securing the door. From the safety of his apartment, he could hear Damon's furious shouts outside, consumed by rage. Damn. Realizing the gravity of the situation, this resident wasted no time and called 911. Called the police. Another resident named Pedro also heard a knock at his door. When he looked through his peephole, he saw a man matching Damon's description. Damon was on the phone, and he heard him saying, I just killed, but the rest was unintelligible. It was around oh, 1 when police officers arrived at the apartment. They encountered 19-year-old Damon Kemp in the parking lot, yelling at the top of his lungs. He was soaking wet, presumably from the canal nearby. Damon, when you speaking crazy! With the officers, Damon made a shocking confession. He said, I killed my friend. He also Trey? began speaking erratically. He killed Trey? About 50 feet away, another officer at the scene found a handgun in the grass. And later... $423 scattered in a stairwell. Near one residence, police found an empty bullet clip and a cell phone. Damon refused to tell them where the crime had taken place. They knocked on the door where they had noticed a bullet hole. After no response, officers pushed open the door, but something was blocking the door. And when they peeked inside, they were shocked to find not one, but two bodies. Trey Ingram and oh. his childhood best friend, Jordan Payden. Oh, They were both gosh. just 19 years old. Trey they were just chilling? They were just chilling at Trey's apartment, playing some video games, and freaking crazy-ass Damon shows up and shoots both of them? That's so freaking sad. They suffered four gunshot wounds, three to the chest and torso, and one to the shoulder. That's messed up. Jordan had been shot six times in the upper neck, lower back, Heck and yeah, upper Ray. chest. Damon Kemp was immediately arrested. He first went Ray to says, do you like Polar Express? That's a classic. Every time around the holiday season, I have to watch Polar Express. Guess what I watched with my wife Bree tonight? It's not even Thanksgiving, but I watch it a couple times every year around the holidays. Elf with Will Ferrell. I freaking love Elf. One of the best holiday Christmas movies. <laughs> Buddy the Elf. To the jail psychiatric ward before being moved to solitary confinement. On the 9th of December, Damon appeared in court. Video from television stations would show him erratically shouting as he was wheeled into the courtroom. Damon stared at the judge. Wide-eyed, as he was held... Yeah, without... someone in the chat earlier said he's a uh, demon-possessed. I, uh... I think he might be. He's got a crazy look in his eye, Damon. ...bail on two accounts of second-degree murder with a firearm. Tonight, the 19-year-old accused of murdering his teenage roommates is... Are they really making a Grinch, too? I didn't know that. Locked up in jail and a judge is not letting him out. When Damon Kemp was wheeled into the courtroom this morning for his bond hearing, he started screaming and the victim's families couldn't handle it. New 6's Jerry Askin is following the bizarre developments. Jerry, haven't seen anything like this in a while. Eric, yes, bizarre for sure. And I'll tell you, his reaction to his charges and to his bond status, some say was pretty dramatic. Tonight, Damon Kemp is sitting behind bars in Volusia County on no bond. In court today, we saw tears all the way around from friends and family involved. There is no answer as to why or how. Narissa Carter had a front row seat oh today. Oh my God, I feel so bad for the son, Trey Ingram, was the mom. Murdered. It got so tough at one point she had to walk out. <laughs> and like any mother who's forced Damn. to grieve, it hurts. Dads and moms need to hug their children. Because you might get a phone call like we did and you won't get a chance to hear their voice anymore. Meantime, back inside the courtroom, we watched as Damon Kemp was wheeled inside. Why is Scre Damon screaming like a freaking madman? What's his issue? They need to put something over his... Hey, something would fix this guy. It's just a piece of tape. Can, can they put tape over his mouth if he keeps screaming? Screaming and calling on a higher power. God! 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 His facial expressions and his mood seemed off as a judge read his charges and his fate. I do believe that there is probable cause for the arrest. Kemp's family and friends in court today shed tears. All as Trey's family got pretty vocal 
even having to be escorted out. Deputies say Kemp was arrested Thursday after he was tied to an armed home invasion. Then deputies say they learned he murdered Trey Ingram and Trey's friend. He's crazy. Trey's family say he was an up-and-coming boxer working to get back in school at BCU. He was helping the suspect get back on his feet by letting him stay with him rent-free. Yeah, I don't understand at all, guys. Damon was friends with Trey. Trey let Damon freaking live with him rent-free. Some friend, right? What motivated Trey or Damon to go and do that to Trey? All he did was help him. Being the giver that Trey's mom said he's always been. Family told us the victims and the suspects all live together. And now it hurts. Tomorrow's never promised. For those who knew Damon, this was an unfathomable situation. His mother describes him as a compassionate and fun-loving child, and that in the 20 years of his life he had never been in trouble. Damon was born in New England and raised in Stone Mountain, I Georgia. I know, underground. Is he was a straight-A student who loved to dance, play basketball, and was planning on going to school to become a music engineer. More importantly, according to Damon's friends and family, he never had any mental health issues. This is a crucial detail, because Damon's behavior leading up to the murder and in the aftermath depicts the man who is suffering. Guys, does he have really tiny ears? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is very random. I know this is a very, you know, sad story and true crime, but does he have like really tiny ears? His ears look little. <laughs> what some would say is indicative of a psychiatric episode. In a phone interview, Damon admits <laughs> his ear just looks tidy. Like that's not normal. Admitted that he had no history of mental health issues. He would say, "I was on drugs. I'm not going to lie to you. All I can remember is <laughs> he's an elf disguised as a human smoking. I don't know if there Peter was Peter Griffin in the ears or anything <laughs> like that." One of the victim's fathers, George Gaines, believed that while Damon was there on the night of the shooting, he wasn't the shooter and that there were others involved. He said that he had learned that Trey had taken some money from some Haitians and that these people were after him. George also questioned the investigation, saying that there were two additional firearms that were recovered from the crime scene and questions why the officers took so long to find the bodies. Sergeant Grant Carger, who was what? the leading homicide investigator, refuted George's claims and is confident that the police did a thorough investigation that led to the discovery of the bodies. Damon Kemp was held in jail since his arrest in 2018, but in May of 2023, the trial for the murders commenced with a jury of eight men. Despite the claims that Damon had no reported history of mental illness, the defense relied on an insanity defense for the case. They focused on the video evidence from that night, with Damon yelling and swearing at the police officers and refusing to obey. I wonder if Damon's in a prison now. I, I, I would sure hope he's in prison. The defense also used testimony from friends and family who witnessed Damon's bizarre behavior in the days leading up to the murders. It is asserted that Damon, at the time of committing the crime, lacked the mental capacity to understand the nature of his actions uh, I... or distinguish right from wrong by invoking. He didn't know right from wrong, but he showed up at Trey's house and killed Trey and Trey's friend. No, I think Damon knew exactly what he was doing. I hate this. They always play the insanity card. You see this time after time when someone gets caught who committed a horrible crime. Oh, they didn't know right from wrong. They're, they're insane. They, 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 uh, they need the insanity plea. They don't know right from wrong, but they were smart enough to show, Damon was smart enough to show up at Trey's apartment and freaking shoot him. But, oh, he didn't know right from wrong. Bunch of bullshit, man. Invoking the insanity defense, they tried to establish that Damon should not be held fully responsible for his actions due to his impaired mental state. 
While Damon had no history of mental health issues, it is possible that he experienced a psychotic Oh, really, break. Marissa? This can occur due to various factors, including stress, trauma, sleep deprivation, drug use, or an underlying genetic predisposition. However, despite the presence of a possible psychotic break and the unusual behavior, there are skeptics who question the authenticity of such displays. Suspecting that Damon's bizarre behavior in and outside of the courtroom may be nothing more than an- <laughs> He looks goofy as hell. I know, what kind of face is he making here? He's like, huh? <laughs> Screaming in the courtroom, God, God, God! <laughs> Act. And that Damon may have displayed mental illness or psych- Yeah, honestly, I feel like he may have just started screaming and stuff in court because he's trying to act like he's insane. He's trying to get the insanity card so he's not, he's judged less harshly. They're like, oh, he's insane, therefore we're not going to put him in prison for life. Causes as a means to evade legal consequences. After all, it isn't uncommon for killers to exaggerate yep. or fake symptoms in order to manipulate the legal system. He was acting as crazy. This can lead to a reduced sentence or placement in a mental health facility instead of prison. And many have pointed out that the way Damon acted inside the courtroom was rather strange. The comment section is filled with people who believe he was acting. In the end, the jury deliberated for it an It was all an act, I think. All fake. Damon Kemp, now 24, was found guilty of two counts of second-degree murder with a firearm. He was also found guilty of armed burglary. Damon himself never testified, and only wrote on a notepad and took occasional sips of water. He did not show any reaction to the verdict, and faces 26 years to life in prison. As the highly anticipated trial unfolded, the world turned its attention to the intricate details of Damon's mental state during the time of the murders. However, this scrutiny failed to provide any solace to the grieving families of the victims, who were left with the haunting question, why? A question that has not yet been answered. Damon and Trey were not mere acquaintances, but they shared a close friendship, making the absence of a clear motive even more confusing. At least for now, their victims' Frickin friends sad. and family are holding on to the hope that one day the truth will be uncovered. Damn! These two men right here, Trey, and this is Trey's friend who was at the apartment when Damon showed up. I can't remember the friend's name. These two men did not deserve to die at such a freaking young age. All because Damon, I don't, had a freaking mental breakdown or whatever. Guys, it said he was charged with two counts of second degree murder. What's the difference between first and second degree? I know first degree is the worst. I feel like one of you guys in the chat would know. I'm just curious. What's the difference between first degree and second degree murder? One is premeditated, one is not. So, so they're saying with second degree, Damon showed up at Trey's apartment, not with, not having the intention of committing murder, but something happened which caused Damon to commit murder. So, I feel like that would be hard to decide if that was premeditated or not. Second is unintentional, unintentional, but could be unplanned. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. 